Welcome to Shaq and the Fool, my man. You know what he's thinking? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, he missed it. Good day to all. Welcome back to our YouTube channel, where we investigate the NBA's unseen stories. As we explore the underside of NBA shooting, get ready to enter the Hall of Fame. The worst shooter in NBA history is the name that will be revealed today as we delve deeper into the record books. Head of the pack and oh, he missed the jam. Prepare yourself for astounding statistics, perplexing misses, and a journey that will make you doubt all you believe you understood about the shooting. It's time to draw attention to the players who had trouble finding the goal. Get ready for a crazy video because this is gonna happen. Today we set out on a mission to find out who holds the awful distinction of being dubbed the worst shooter in NBA history, a title no player ever hopes to achieve. We're about to delve into the depths of shooting problems that afflicted some of the brightest talents to ever grace the hardwood, from crucial shots that went awry to air balls that left us perplexed. Consequently, gather your popcorn, settle down, and get ready to see greatness from a different perspective. The NBA's most difficult shots have a little-known backstory. You've arrived at who's the worst shooter in NBA history. Here's a takeaway. Jackson's going to go up and miss the jam. Boy, if that doesn't say everything about this. Tan, Chuck Hayes. As an undersized, gritty postman, Hayes channels hustle and tenacity better than any other player in the NBA to be successful, despite having the most bizarre stroke of all-time NBA players. He is the only player on this list to have a lifetime hitting percentage of better than 60%. He lacks a flowing stroke, his feet aren't placed or aligned with the basket, and his elbow is out in front of his head. And this can also be utilized to call the other team's attention to lane violations. The Charles Barkley golf swing of free throw shooting is actually this. Since entering the league, Hayes' swing has significantly smoothed out, but it will always rank among the worst or funniest shot attempts in league history. Nine, Kwame Brown. Given his record in the league, doubt anyone is very surprised that he made this list of players. Due to the fact that Kwame has never had a terrific shooting touch or been much of a face-up threat in the post, it is not surprising that his success from the line is best characterized as tepid. In his career, he has made a number of highlight free shots. Ranging from banking one into simply airballing one, it's typical for even some of the, the finest players in the league to airball a free shot. It doesn't help Kwame's perceived image that these stumbles and poor shooting come from one of the most scrutinized busts in NBA history. 8. Emeka Okafor Okafor has been a top player in the league in blocking shots and foul shots since being selected in the 2004 NBA draft. Emeka has consistently had the lowest free throw percentage in the NBA over the past seven seasons. Although he hardly bends his legs, his shot is primarily an arm motion, which causes most of his tries to miss and even gives us a glimpse of the unusual double air ball. Other factors besides mechanics are at play, particularly his touch and accuracy, but Okafor hasn't been able to gel as a free throw shooter and probably never will. 7. Dwight Howard The best center in the NBA, Dwight has improved as an offensive weapon in recent years, even developing into a face-up danger from the perimeter. Unfortunately, he has struggled to surpass the 60% free throw conversion mark since his freshman year, since his free throw accuracy never quite caught up to his mid-range game. He takes his time at the line, sometimes even too much, but one of the most obvious issues with his shooting is that he tends to fire outward rather than upwards which is what most players learn to do when they are younger. To change his luck from the line, he recently went out and hired a new free throw shooting coach, and his stroke is already looking better. Howard, meanwhile, has missed more than 2,000 free throws in his brief career, which works out to almost 3.66 points per game. 6. Andrus Biedrin What a rookie year the internet lacks. However, Andrus's stroke when he first entered the league was pretty terrible, and this footage really doesn't do it credit. I have no idea how Biedrin attempted his free throw. He removed the mechanical snag after that, but his career-long performance has remained consistently poor, if not worsened. The Warriors head coach at that time, Don Nelson, requested that Rick Barry train with Biedrins to help him improve his free throw shooting so that he can adopt Barry's granny-like sneaky approach, which was successful for Barry in his playing career. In his relatively brief NBA career, Biedrin's free throws have largely lost their ick element, but he still hasn't sorted it out. 
He's even had a few seasons where he shot 30.6, 32.3, and 16% from the line while having limited game counts. Five, Dennis Rodman. Throughout his career, the Worm was a superb rebounder, leading the league in this category seven times. He was probably at the bottom of the league in free throw shooting during his career, if not worse. In Detroit, he made an effort to shoot the ball from the line with some semblance of normalcy. But he failed to hold his follow through, look away from the rim to observe the ball and square up his body to the hoop. Unfortunately, as his NBA career proceeded, it became clear that his touch and mechanics were lacking. He didn't make much progress in San Antonio, though he did start to adopt a little more of a carefree demeanor and occasionally experiment with new things. When he arrived in Chicago, his free throws adopted a who am I kidding type of relaxed, less mechanical technique, and he was lucky to make a pair. Rodman struggled at the line, but nobody had high expectations for him there to begin with, and his performance in the video more than made up for it. 4. Shaquille O'Neal You should be on this list if your team's plan for beating you at the free throw line is based on your subpar shooting percentage. In his prime, O'Neal's post-dominance was successfully challenged with the hack-a-shack move. O'Neal has never been a great free throw shooter, hovering around 50% for the majority of his career. But he has always been funny about it and even had the rare hot streak. Shaq lacked any sort of consistent shooting rhythm, appeared to be trying to balance the ball more in his hand, and simply never had the shooting touch. How frequently do you recall Shaq making a face-up 18-footer in his prime? He didn't fine-tune jumpers from the perimeter. Instead, he played with his back to the hoop and unleashed his power in the paint. Shaq could have scored 1.61 more points per game on average if he had made just 70% of his free throws during his career. The fact that Shaq missed more than 5,317 shots over his career is mind-boggling. It's about equal to a regular person having to shoot a tennis ball into a target proportionally the size of two tennis balls at 7 1 inch with those oven mitts for hands, which isn't simple at all if you've ever tried. 3. Chris Dudley In his professional life, Dudley was a hustler. Nothing more, nothing less. The 6 e 11 inches Yale Center was highly sought after for his size, tenacity, ability to rebound, and defensive play. Dudley was as bit as horrible as you would anticipate him to be for someone with that description, not to mention free throws. He barely went to the line 1.7 times per game during his career, which was fortunate for his teams. He's also one of the few players to have missed more free throws during his career than he made. Last year, Dudley ran for governor of Oregon and made some political digs based on his poor free throw performance. He did miss five straight free throws on one occasion for the Knicks after the opposition committed an astounding three-lane infraction, setting the NBA record for most consecutive free throw misses with 13. He was consistently one of the NBA's greatest citizens, receiving the honor in 1996, and he consistently made a significant contribution to society away from the court. 2. Ben Wallace Wallace has historically been the NBA's worst free throw shooter, yet his career is still active. His career is littered with lowlights like the uncommon double air ball, strange fluke shots, opposition players high-fiving him on a make because it's so uncommon, shots that utterly air ball offline and probably rarest of all making both. His mechanics were poor and his shooting touch and accuracy were atrocious. However, Wallace's toughness, instincts, and agility made him a rebounding and shot-blocking stud to be feared. Even in his career, the four-time Defensive Player of the Year has missed more shots than he has made from the free throw line. In NBA history, Wallace is the last player you want to be at the line to win the game, but fortunately for him, it has rarely come to that. 1. Wilt Chamberlain The only center in NBA history to lead the league in assists, average over 50 points per game, and score 100 points in a single game, the stilt boasts a number of records that are likely unbreakable. In contrast, he attempted 5,805 out of 11,862 free throws during his NBA career and failed. If you do the arithmetic, that works up to an astonishing 5.55 points per game that he and his teams were unable to score. Imagine if he had a lifetime average of more than 35 points per game as opposed to the 30.1 he finished with. He scored more than 50 points per game on average throughout that season, but only 10 of his efforts at the free throw line were successful. He would score about 2.15 more points per game if his career shooting percentage was closer to 70%. Although he wasn't statistically the worst, in my opinion, he was the worst because of how consistently terrible he was from the line and how many points he missed. How many times would those few points from the free throw line 
have been a game changer and tipped the odds in his favor during those NBA finals where his team lost to Bill Russell and the Celtics. And with that, we have come to the end of our investigation into the NBA's worst shooters ever. We now have a greater understanding of how shooting has changed through time, the human side of sports, and the priceless lessons these players have imparted to us. Let's not lose sight of the fact that they belong to a select group of athletes that competed at the top level of basketball, even though they may be recognized for their difficulties with shooting. Beyond shooting percentages, their efforts showed tenacity, adaptability, and the capacity to have an impact on the game in other ways. If you like the information and entertainment in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel so you may see more engrossing material on basketball. We value your support and anticipate providing you with more fascinating articles and analyses in the future.